Hey everyone, how's it going? I'm an average cyclist and today I decided to ride with Pace Partners in Zwift. If you have never used Pace Partners before, I'm going to give you three ways that you can use them in your training. Now there are more than three ways to use them, but I will focus on the three that I do the most. Now I do want to say that Eric from Zwift Insider has a great website that covers everything Zwift and he actually has a great article on the Pace Partners that I will put in the description and you should check out. In fact, the things that I'm going to say are the things that he said as well. If you are not familiar with Pace Partners at all in Zwift, there are four of them and they're actually named after the categories that you can see in Zwift, the A, B, C, D. So the D-Bot, D-Diesel, is the yellow avatar and rides at about 1.5 watts per kilogram. The C-Bot, C-Cadence, is the blue avatar and rides at about 2.5 watts per kilogram. The B-Bot, B-Brevet, is the green avatar and rides at about 3.3 watts per kilogram. The A-Bot, red avatar, rides at about 4.2 watts per kilogram. Now, if you are familiar with Zwift at all and these categories, you can see that the categories that they ride at are very close to the boundaries for each of these different categories. So D is typically from 1.5 to 2.5, and then C is 2.5 to 3.2, B is 3.2 to 4.0, and anything above 4.0 is a A category. Today I decided to ride with a bot because I was looking to ride at a particular pace to push myself. There weren't any group rides that I could see that I wanted to join at a particular pace and I didn't feel like doing a race today. When I first started using Zwift, I started using the Pace Partners right away and I started with D Diesel. Now at first, I wasn't actually able to hold on to the wheel for an hour. The reason for this was because as we were going up and down hills, I was kind of yo-yoing back and forth because I wasn't very familiar with the drafting in Zwift and just being able to hold a certain pace. As I improved, I eventually was able to get to an hour. And so I decided to go to the C Cadence. Again, at first, I wasn't able to hold the wheel for an hour, but eventually I was. In fact, during the Rafa 500, I was staying on the wheel of C Cadence for two, two and a half hours. Although I'll admit there was such a large group that the draft was ridiculous. And so it made it a little bit easier. Now, I had just recently taken my FTP test and it came out with an FTP of 3.5 for watts per kilogram. And so based on that, to push myself, you think I might want to ride with the A-Bot. But I actually decided to ride with the B-Bot, B-Brevet. The reason I decided this is because the day before I had ridden 60 miles at a 2.5 watts per kilogram pace. Actually, it was 2.6 watts per kilogram. I had also done a leg workout the day before. And I was hoping after this ride to do a quick run. With all those factors, I was a little bit worried about pushing myself too hard and perhaps injuring myself. Even though B Brevet is technically below my FTP in watts per kilogram, it could still be difficult to hold on to that wheel for an hour, which is what I was trying to do. In the future, I will try to ride with the A bot and see how long I can hold on. I know for a fact that I can't stay on to the A bot for an hour. I'm going to guess right now I could probably stay on between 10 and 20 minutes.
The first reason you should use these bots is they provide a good consistent pace. This could be useful if you're looking on doing an endurance ride at a particular watts per kilogram. I know in Zwift it can be very tempting. You see someone fly by you and you try to catch their wheel. Or perhaps you see a sprint banner and you can't help but kind of go for it. With these pace partners, you kind of have something to look at and you're not tempted by other people to kind of rush and get somewhere. This could also be good if you're looking to train in a particular zone. Perhaps one of these pace partners is in your threshold zone or perhaps your VO2 max zone. As I mentioned, I'm going to use the A-Bot to try to see to push myself in this VO2 max zone to see how long I can hold on and see how I can improve myself. The second reason is because it can teach you how to stay in the draft. The draft in Zwift can be very tricky, and as I'd mentioned, when I first started riding with D Diesel, I had a lot of trouble staying with them, not because I wasn't strong enough, but just because I didn't understand the draft. I would get dropped, and then I'd have to put in a big effort to kind of catch up to them. So learning to stay in the pack, learning how to keep a particular pace and stay in that draft is very easy when you're riding with these bots, especially a bot at a lower pace to kind of get used to that feel. The third reason is because in order to get faster, you have to ride with faster people. As I mentioned, today I was looking to go at a faster pace, but there were no group rides in which I could join at that pace I was looking for. I also didn't want to ride by myself because sometimes I just don't have the, I guess you could say mental capacity to do that. I I need to be kind of chasing after something. So to get faster, you need to ride with faster people. And these bots can provide you an easy way to ride with faster people, especially at a particular pace. The way I'm also going to use this, as I'd already mentioned, as a gauge for how I am improving over time. Well, as you can see, I was able to stay with B Brevet for the entire hour. I was really happy about that, especially as I mentioned the day before I'd ridden 60 miles and I'd also done a leg workout. So I was a little bit tired. So that made me really happy. Perhaps in the future, I'll try to see if I can do it for an hour and a half, two hours. But most likely, I'm probably going to try riding with the A-Bot to see how long I can stay with them. Hopefully, you've also learned a couple reasons why you may want to ride with bots. They can be a lot of fun. The bots can currently be found in Watopia, and they can also be found in the McCurry Islands, which is very cool that they're expanding to other areas. Well, I hope you all had a good time. Uh, Subscribe if you like what I am doing, and hit that notification bell for when I upload videos. I'm hoping to do some races coming up and perhaps doing the Tour de Zwift.